Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter Electrochemistry. Let us move on with the topic Conductance of Electrolytic Solutions. Let me now explain to you that what are the factors on which electronic and electrolytic conductance depend. We know in the case of metals, the conduction of electricity is due to electrons, moving electrons. And therefore, it is the structure of these metals which is responsible for conduction of electricity in the case of metals. How is that so? You know, metallic atoms, they join together and they stay together forming a lattice. And how is this lattice formed? The outermost electrons of all the metallic atoms, they usually, the valence electrons, they are lost. And these valence electrons, they start swimming between the atoms. So as soon as the valence electron is lost, the atomic kernel becomes positively charged. The atom that is left after the loss of outermost electrons is positively charged and the electrons which are lost are negatively charged. Therefore, this negative and positive charge, the negatively charged electrons which are floating freely between the metallic atoms and the positively charged kernels of the metallic atoms, they remain attracted towards each other and they stay stuck and that forms the metallic crystal or the metallic lattice. And it is these moving electrons which are responsible for conduction of electricity in the case of metals. On the other hand, when you have an electrolytic solution, you have uh, an, electrolyte, an ele electrolyte which has been dissolved in water, that is an ionic compound, which dissociates into the cation and anion. And this positive and negatively charged cation and anion act as the carriers of electricity and in the medium that is like water, they can move around and that is why for electrolytic conduction, it is these ions which act as the carriers of electricity. While in the case of metals, the carriers of electricity are these electrons. So let us now individually understand these, what are the factors on which this kind of conductance depends. Metallic or electronic conductance, it is called electronic because the conductance in metals is due to electrons, is due to electrons. It depends on, number one, the nature and the structure of the metal. Obviously, some metals are better conductors, some metals are poorer conductors. And there are other factors also which are involved, but the structure and the nature of the metal, also, that is the first factor on which the, uh, the, uh, the electronic conductance depends. The second factor is the number of valence electrons per atom. Look, imagine that there is a billiards table. And if there is a billiards table, you take uh, the stick and you hit it on a ball. If the ball goes and hits just one ball, all the energy of that ball is transferred to that other ball. But if you hit the ball in such a way that the ball goes and hits three, four other balls, what happens to the energy? How is the energy transferred? The energy is now split between the different balls. So all of the energy is not transferred to one individual uh, ball, rather it is distributed. A fraction of it is present in each. So what happens? In the case of metals which have more than one valence electron, it is like having more billiard balls. The electricity which comes, that energy is getting distributed between more electrons. So the electronic conduction would be better when the atom or the metallic atom has only one valence electron. There is no confusion. The electricity which comes, uh, it, it, or rather the electrons which enter the circuit or the metallic uh, conductor they come and hit that one electron and all of the energy is transferred. There is no confusion, there are no fractions created. So there is no fragmentation of the energy. And therefore, the number of valence electrons per atom when we say those atoms or those metallic atoms which have one valence electrons are usually found to be better conductors of electricity. The third factor on which electronic conductance depends is the temperature. And it has been found in the case of metals it, as you increase the temperature, the metallic conductance decreases. There's a reason for this. Metals are solids. And if you increase the temperature, the atoms which are present, the kernels, they would start vibrating. And if they vibrate, the electricity is also, is kind of, it is actually 
in the opposite direction of the movement of electrons. But electricity passes due to movement of electrons. So when there is too much of vibration in the solid, whether it is the bombarding electrons or it is the kernels themselves that are vibrating higher, the movement of these electrons becomes difficult. And therefore, the conduction is decreased. So we find as we increase the temperature of metals, the conduction, it decreases. Or the conductance of metals decreases with increase of temperature. It decreases with, an incre with increase of temperature due to vibration. As electrons enter through one end and leave through the other end, in the case of metals, this is really important. In the case of metallic conduction, what is happening? Electrons are entering from one end. They are the cause of the movement of electric current in the opposite direction. But as electron enters a metallic rod, the electrons which are present in the metallic rod there, the free floating electrons, they get repelled by this electron which enters. And if it gets repelled, it moves away from it. And when it moves away from it, it comes closer to the electron behind it. And now it starts, this electron starts experiencing repulsion from the electron which moved towards it. So this moves away. When this moves away, the next electron experiences the repulsion. That moves away. So in a way, the movement of electron was just one electron entered the rod or the metallic wire. And the electron next to it got pushed, got pushed, got pushed, got pushed, got pushed. And in the end of the wire, one electron moved out of the wire thereby completing and if that one and you bring it here to the electrical source it completes the cycle that is how electricity flows when electrons are moving in this direction electricity is flowing in the opposite direction so in the case of metallic conductors if one electron entered one end of the metallic wire one electron left from the other end of the electric of the metallic wire. So the composition of the metal did not change. This is really important in the case of electronic conduction. That in the case of metals, there is no chemical change. The metal does not undergo any chemical change. So an electron enters through one end and leaves through another. The composition of the metallic conductor remains unchanged. The mechanism of conductance through semiconductors is a little more complex and we are not going to be studying those. So this was the conduction of metals. The semiconductors we are not studying right now. We now come to electrolytic solutions which are also conductors. If you take pure water, it has hydrogen ions and OH negative ions and in class 11 you've already studied that the concentration of H positive and OH negative is 10 to the power minus 7 molarity, moles per liter in pure water. In one liter of water, you will have 10 to the power minus 7 moles of H positive ions and 10 to the power minus 7 moles of OH negative ions. This quantity of ions is very, very low to conduct electricity. Therefore, pure water, if you take, is not a good conductor. It's a poor conductor of electricity. Not that it does not conduct electricity, it will because it has some amount of ions. But the ion, the concentration of the ions is so low that it's a really poor conductor. So it has low conductivity. But when you add an electrolyte to it, the electrolyte dissociates as soon as it enters the water. For example, if you added sodium chloride, sodium chloride dissociates into sodium ions and chloride ions. Sodium ions are positively charged, chloride ions are negatively charged. Now the ions present inside the water or in the solution has increased. And therefore the carriers for electric current are more. So when electric current enters through one end, there are carriers to carry through the solution. So when you add an electrolyte to, the, uh, to water, it starts conducting electricity better. So adding electrolyte increases its conductivity and this kind of conduction is known as ionic or electrolytic conduction. Why do we call it electrolytic? What is lysis? Lysis is breaking down and electro means electricity. So breaking down of a molecule due to electricity. So when you added sodium chloride to the solution, 
the electricity which came in the sodium and the chloride ions they broke the lysis the breaking down of sodium and chloride ions took place and electricity was passing through it therefore we call it electrolytic conductance conductance in which electrolysis took place so when electrolysis takes place the nature of the substance it changes a neutral um, salt when you put it into water it got dissociated into positive and negative ions so a chemical change occurs in the case of electrolytic conductance so this is called ionic or electrolytic conductance what does electrolytic conductance depend upon it depends on the nature of the electrolyte added you have studied earlier about weak and strong electrolytes a weak electrolyte is one which when you add it in water does not dissociate much its uh, uh, its degree of dissociation is very low and on the other hand a strong electrolyte will be one which you put into water and it dissociates almost completely in water so if you add a weak electrolyte it would add very few ions to the solution therefore the conduction of the solution would be low for example you had water and you added let us say acetic acid to it which is a weak electrolyte so it does not produce as many ions and therefore the carriers of electric current are less and therefore it would not affect the conduction as much on the other hand if i added a strong electrolyte like kcl or nacl that would dissociate completely and provide a large amount of ions or charge carriers and therefore it becomes easy it, it has a much higher conduction so the first factor that affects electrolytic conductance is the nature of the electrolyte is it a weak electrolyte or is it a strong electrolyte the second point is the size of the ions produced and their solvation now how does the size affect conduction in the case of metals i told you that it was a solid conductor a conductor that was solid and it was only the moving part was only the electrons in the case of a solution or electrolytic conduction you have a liquid and the ions are moving about in a liquid so when they are the here it was electrons electrons are much smaller in size but when you have a whole ion moving around it's bulkier in comparison to an electron it is much larger therefore when you have the ions present in the solution the smaller it is what happens what do you usually see someone who's uh, thinner who ha who is less in weight and is smaller would run faster than someone who would be bulkier so it is the same uh, an ion which is smaller in size would be able to wiggle its way through other atoms of or the solvent through the solvent molecules water molecules and it will be able to move faster but a bigger ion will take longer to pass through it may not be easy for a larger ion to pass through therefore the size of the ions produced by the ionic compound will also determine the conduction and the second is solvation solvation is when the ions that are produced they somehow combine with the solvent molecules so when they combine with the solvent molecule they form complexes and these complexes are much larger in size now since there are some ions which have a tendency to form larger complexes and there are some ions which have a tendency to form smaller complexes and on the whole when a complex is formed it is like forming a giant molecule the larger the complex the more space it occupies and the more difficult it becomes for it to move therefore both solvation and size of the ion if they are more the conduction would be less the third factor is the nature of the solvent and its viscosity of course the nature of solvent the nature of metal any how, how good a conductor is and the nature of the substance would be a factor on which it would depend the viscosity if the liquid itself is viscous it is thick a liquid that itself does not flow very easily for example if i take a, a drop of water and i allow it to trickle from the side of a bottle or a surface i find if i put water here it will trickle down the board very easily but if i put a drop of honey on the top it will take longer to come down why because honey is viscous 
honey has molecules which are heavier they are, that liquid is thicker the more viscous a liquid is the more difficult it is for it itself to move and imagine the ions that are present in it how are they going to move when it itself is not moving fast so the more viscous a liquid is the more it would hinder conduction it would not be easy for conduction so how would the conduction depend on viscosity the thicker is the solvent the lower would be the speed of the molecules and therefore the lower would be the conduction then comes the fourth factor that is concentration of the electrolyte normally if you add more and more electrolyte to a solution to a solvent as you keep adding more and more electrolyte the number of ions goes on increasing as the number of ions goes on increasing the charge carriers are increasing and that is why conduction occurs do you know when we took we started with pure water it was not conducting electricity or it was a very poor conductor of electricity but when we added salt to it it turned into a good conductor which means the conduction improves or increases with addition of an ionic compound or with the addition of ions or by increasing the concentration of the solute in the solution but molar conductivity is another uh, factor is another thing that you will study and molar conductivity is something that decreases with increase of concentration but i will explain this when we come when we study about molar conductivity in more detail so concentration of the electrolyte usually with increase of concentration of the electrolyte the conduction should increase but molar conductivity decreases with increase of concentration and the fifth factor the last factor is temperature in the case of again we have bulkier atoms we have ions and the solvent molecules are all large therefore when you increase the temperature their vibration will be more in the case of solids the vibration in the case of solids when you increase the temperature the vibration of the molecules was hindering the movement of electrons but here the vibration is going to help the ions to move faster they have more energy if they have more energy they can move through faster and that is why they carry electric current more easily therefore increase of temperature in the case of electrolytic conduction increases the conductivity but increase of temperature in the case of electronic conduction decreases the conductivity so that's the difference between electronic and electrolytic conduction also let me just read this last fact the passage of current through electrolyte can change its composition yes due to electrochemical reactions in the case of metals if one electron was entering the metallic wire one electron was leaving the metallic wire and the composition of the metal was not changing but in the case of electrolytic conduction the the ionic compound is dissociating into its ions and chemical reactions that is oxidation and reduction do take place and since the oxidation and reduction do take place there are chemical reactions that take place and the composition does not remain the same as a result of passage of electric current so that is the difference between electronic conductance and electrolytic conductance and these were the factors that affected both of these conductances with this i'll finish this video if you found it helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now